that money. So he sold his house. He bought boxes and boxes and boxes and balls and balls and more balls. He carried so many toys he couldn't see where he was going. His stack went way above his head. But he didn't mind. So what if his arms ached? So what if he kept walking into walls? So what if he had no friends? He had boxes and balls. And when he passed Wemix, they would turn and say, Wow, he must be a good Wemix. Punchinello heard them. He couldn't see them, but he heard them. And he felt good. I'm a good Wemix, he thought. But then somebody changed the rules. It was the mayor's wife. She was very proud of her boxes and balls. She not only had a lot of them, but she also had special kinds of them. She bought them at the fanciest stores with funny names and left the names on the boxes so everyone would see them. She wanted to be the best Wemmick. One day she had an idea. Not only will I have the most, but I will go the highest. So she climbed on top of one of her boxes and shouted, Look at me, everybody! Immediately, all of the box and ball people tried to outdo her. One climbed on a fountain, another on a balcony, and then another onto a roof. It was the mayor who spotted the mountain, however. Behind the village of the Wemmicks was Wemmicks Peak. I'm going to the top of the mountain, he shouted, hoping to get there first. The race was on to see which Wemmick would have the most and climb the highest. Wemmicks loaded with boxes and balls began running up the mountain. It was a crazy, crazy race. Since the wooden people couldn't see where they were going, they bumped into each other. Since they were exhausted, they fell over their own feet. Since the trail was narrow, some fell down the side of it, but they kept going. Bringing up the rear was Punchinello. He was having a hard climb, harder than the rest. After all, he'd only been a good Wemmick for a short time. He wasn't used to carrying so many boxes and balls, but he was determined. He kept putting one little wooden foot ahead of the other, but since he couldn't see, he didn't know he was on the side of the trail. And since he couldn't see, he didn't know that he had left the trail. All he knew was that, all of a sudden, he was all alone. I must be ahead of everyone else, he thought to himself. And so he kept climbing up and up and up. I must be very near the top. I'm such a good way big. I'll be the highest with the most. About that time, Punchinello's foot caught the edge of something. He tried to keep his balance. His toy swayed to the right, then to the left. He leaned back, then forward, but he couldn't stop. He was going to fall. He didn't know, however, that he had walked up the trail to Eli's house. He tripped on the step of the porch and tumbled through the front door of Eli's workshop. When Punchinello realized where he was, he was embarrassed. For a long time he stayed, face down on the floor, surrounded by his boxes and balls. One of the balls rolled across the floor and stopped at Eli's workbench. That's when the woodcarver turned around. Punchinello? Eli's voice was calm and deep and kind. The Wemmick still didn't move. He could feel his wooden face turning red. Looks like you've been carrying a big load. The weary Wemmy climbed to his knees but kept his head low. These are my boxes and balls, he said quietly. Do you play with the boxes and balls? asked Eli. Punchinello shook his head. Do you like boxes and balls? I like the way they make me feel. And how do they make you feel? Important, Punchinello answered, still with a small voice. 
Hmm, Eli observed. So you've been thinking like the other Wemmicks. You've been thinking that the more you have, the better you are and the happier you'll be. I suppose so. Come here, Punchinello. I want to show you something. Punchinello lifted his wooden head and looked at Eli for the first time. He was relieved to see that the Wemmick maker wasn't angry. Punchinello followed Eli over to the window. Look at them, Eli said. Punchinello looked out the window at the swarm of Wemmicks still climbing the mountain. They were tumbling, stumbling, fighting each other, even elbowing each other to get ahead. Do they look happy? Eli asked. Punchinello just shook his head. Do they look important? Not at all, Punchinello said. Noticing the mayor and his wife, the mayor was on the ground and she was stepping on his back. She had a box on her head and he had a ball in his mouth. Do you think I created Wemmicks to act that way? asked Eli. No. Punchinello felt a big hand on his shoulder. Do you know how much your boxes and balls cost you? My books and bed, my money and my house. My little friend, they cost you much more than that. Punchinello was trying to remember what else he had sold when Eli continued. They cost you happiness. You haven't been happy, have you? Punchinello paused. No. They cost you friends. And most of all, they cost you trust. You didn't trust me to make you happy. You trusted these boxes and balls. Punchinello looked at the pile of toys. All of a sudden, they didn't seem so valuable. I kind of messed up. That's okay, re Eli replied. You're still special. Punchinello ducked his head and smiled. You're special. Not because of what you have. You're special because of who you are. You are mine. I love you. Don't forget that, little friend. I won't. Punchinello smiled. Then he paused and asked, Eli? Yes? What should I do with these boxes and balls? Perhaps you should give them to someone who really needs them. Punchinello turned to leave, but stopped again. Uh, Eli? Yes? I don't have a place to sleep. Eli smiled and offered. Would you like to sleep here tonight? I sure would. I'm very tired. And so that night, Panchinello slept on a bed of wood shavings. He slept well. It felt good to be in the house of his maker.